Peggy 12. Welcome, heroes, to this combat demo of Might and Magic Hero 6. I'm Noemi Verpo, your community developer, and I'm going to explain how combat is handled in Hero 6. Just a quick disclaimer. What you are seeing here comes from an alpha version of the game, so there are still a couple of bugs and placeholders here and there. Now let's see what's on the screen. I'm playing Slava Griffin, and my army is on the left side. You can see crossbowmen, griffins, praetorians and sisters. I'm fighting against a neutral army of necropolis creatures comprising of vampires, skeletons, ghouls and leeches. In the bottom left hand corner you can see the initiative bar. It shows the order in which the creatures are going to play this turn. In the bottom right hand corner I can access my hero's abilities. You can see the might attack, the faction ability and the spellbook. Next to the spellbook, you can see the quick access bar where I can put my favorite abilities and spells. Now let's start the battle! Vampires are fast creatures, so they go first. I'm using an ability called Heroism to raise the morale and luck of my griffins. We went back to using the system in Heroes 3, where heroes can act at any time during the turn but they can only act once. The first time it is attacked during a turn, a unit can retaliate. And creatures, such as the Griffin, can even retaliate more than once. As usual in Heroes, the Vampire drains the life of his enemies when attacking or retaliating. As the Ghoul has good luck, it can make a critical hit. Action cameras are triggered by critical hits. You can deactivate them if you wish. Can you see the glittering effect on the griffin? That's because I have moved my patrol next to it. The Praetorian is able to shield other creatures, thus absorbing part of the damage they receive. The Sisters of Hellrath are support units, so their main purpose is not to fight the enemy directly. Here, my sisters are healing the Griffins. They can also resurrect fallen units as long as the stack itself hasn't been destroyed. A new turn has begun, so my hero can act again. If I don't want to use an ability, I can also use a heroic strike with my hero. Of course, it is also possible to defend and wait if you don't want your unit to attack. All Heroes fans will have recognized the golden bird above the griffin, which means morale is high. So the griffin will act twice this turn. This can turn the tide of the battle, for instance, allowing the griffins to kill the last vampire. Once upgraded, the skeleton's attack spreads a web, decreasing the initiative of enemy units. It's now time for the sisters to enter the fight. They may not be fighters, but they are more than capable of killing the remaining goals. Now, I'm using the griffin's ability, the diving attack. As in Heroes 5, the griffin flies away and will strike the enemy at the end of his turn. Contrary to Heroes 5, the diving attack always hits the target even if it has moved. This ability cannot be used twice in a row though. Because I still have good morale, my Praetorian can act twice, so he will be able to reach the skeleton and the leash. With only one Praetorian remaining, I have no hope of killing the leash but I can at least block him to prevent him from shooting at my griffin.
Time for my hero to destroy the sack of bones. One of the advantages of upgrading your sentinels to Praetorian is that, in addition to their shielding ability, they can also retaliate when the ally they protect is attacked. Thanks to high luck, the griffin makes a critical hit. The leash will go out in style. Victory is mine! I hope you enjoyed this combat video.